All right, welcome to another vlog. It's your boy Ethan. Hope you're having a great day. After the 510 massacre, we are back at Encore and playing the 1 3 today. See how it goes. Run it back up. We're back to normal after that bankroll challenge episode. I'm um, gonna go back on the grind, see what happens. You're probably, I think, after five playing 510 and knowing that I can absolutely hang with the, with the players there, I just need the money. Um, obviously, get a little better too. You'll probably see me play a little more 2 5 moving forward. Um, I'm in this in between phase. I think right now it's I'm good enough to play 2 5. I just don't really, I don't know, it depends. Um, at the end of the day, I'm going to play the game that makes me the most amount of money, and the way to make money is to play against players that are worse than you. So 1-3 is definitely where I can make money. 2-5 um, is still iffy, but we'll see. See what happens. Um, someone just shouted my name across the uh, parking garage right now, which is wicked funny. <laughs> I don't know who did that, but um, anyways, we're going to head up there and uh, get some cards dealt. Maybe you'll see some more 2-5 from me in the future, but for the time being, 1-3 it is today. Hopefully you enjoy the video, and let's try to run well. We're hopping right into the hand, so let's go ahead and do it. So the very first hand that we get involved in, we have Ace-9 offsuit in the cutoff, and we're playing a six-handed here. Six-handed is, uh, is definitely a good candidate to raise things up. I raise things up to $12, and we only get one caller on the big blind, so we're off to a flop. Flop comes deuce, six, eight, two hearts out there, and we do have the ace of hearts, so on a pretty dry board, um, board that doesn't really hit my range a whole lot. When he checks to me here, just going to fire, um, think ace high can be good a lot of the time. I bet 15, he makes the call, we're off to a turn. The turn comes the 10 of spades, giving us a gutter ball, also a backdoor flush draw as well. Once again, he checks, and here with an improved hand, uh, basically, I go ahead and fire a second barrel of $35. He thinks for a little bit and makes the call. Uh, just seemed like he was at near the bottom of his range or just didn't really have that strong of a hand. Um, was fairly reluctant to call after thinking it over. We're off to a river, which is the queen of diamonds. And once again, he checks. And here, the queen definitely hits our preflop opening range. Um, so once again, just going to put some pressure onto him. I throw out a bet of $60. It's fairly small, and I think any 8 can call, but I don't think an 8 or a 10. I don't think he has an 8 or a 10 in this spot, given the way he called flop and turn. So here, um, he thinks it over and thinks it over for like a minute long, give or take, and ends up making the call. I tell him that he's good with ace high, and he has ace deuce of diamonds. Called me three streets with bottom pair, um, and he made the right read. I thought that uh, I thought he was weak, and I thought that my small amount um, on the river there was going to uh, get him off that, but he sniffed it out and made a pretty good call. Second hand, we have pocket queens in the big blind, so pretty good premium hand. The button open limps. The small blind, who is very aggressive, raises to $15. Here, obviously, was going to 3-bet him anyways, so pretty good spot to do so in position of this uh, player here. So I go ahead and 3-bet to $50. Both players snap call this 3-bet. What's happening? I don't know, but they both could not have called the $50 faster. So we're off to a flop, and we're going to a flop three ways. Flop comes ace, 10, 10. Not a board that I like at all. Um, when small blind checks to me here, just going to check. I don't like the ace. And the button jams the stack for $165 total. Small blind folds, and here given just, ah, oh God, this is not the player type I wanted to get involved with, jamming. And this is just never a bluff. Doesn't matter. Just um, just given the player type, it's never a bluff. So, so I lay it down, and uh, we're about 30 minutes into the session so far, and I'm in the game for 600 after a couple of hands. I am not happy with this. Next hand, we have 4-5 offsuit under the gun, and I put the straddle on because I'm in for too much and feeling probably just a little tilted. A very recreational player opens up the action on the button to $12, folds to me, min raise. Yeah, we're gonna be forced to call the uh, the extra $6 since we already committed ourselves six pre-flops. So I make the call and we're off to a flop heads up. The flop comes Jack 10-5, two clubs out there. I check with bottom pair and he throws it a bet of $15 here. I mean, just going to call right now, see what happens. It's not like I have a bunch of equity, just a bunch of 
Uh, really just bottom pair and probably could be folding this, but against this player, I thought let's try to uh, get mixed in with him. So I make the call and we go to a turn, which is the four of diamonds. Awesome, good old suck out if we were behind. So once again, I check letting him fire and continue. He throws it a bet of $35 and he only has $65 behind this bet. So easy check jam here um, spot for us. So I go ahead and do that, put them all in and he makes the call. So we're off to a river, gonna see what happens. The river is the ace of diamonds. So the draws break out and we're feeling pretty good about our hand. We show four or five with bottom two pair and he shows ace 10 off suit. So that is just gross. We are not running good at all very early on in the session. He called my jam with middle pair. I mean, I want that all day, but that's unfortunate. Spot after that, we have Jack-10 offsuit on the button. We have an under the gun limper and a rec the same recreational player with ace-10 from last hand. He raises things up to $11. Folds all the way back to myself. Jack-10 off is a good spot to defend from him, especially on the button. So I call the $11 and the under the gun player calls as well. We're off to a flop three ways. The flop comes queen, nine, three, two spades out there and action checks to me. Open ended, can't win this pot with jack high. So let's go ahead and bet. We bet $20 and only the under the gun player makes the call. He also watches the channel, so shout out to you. The turn is a magical card for us. It is the eight of hearts. It brings in a backdoor flush draw, but we're sitting with the nut straight. And he checks to me. Going to size up bigger here once I hit my draw, want to charge flush draws, and also, you know, maybe random queen X hands. So um, I go ahead and bet $55. He thinks it over for a little bit and ends up flatting, and he makes the call. So we're off to a river. Let's try to, uh, to fade some hearts, try to fade some spades here. The river comes with the queen of diamonds, which is a pretty good card given that um, usually holdings that would call down two streets at this point would contain a queen. So hopefully he improved to trips. He checks though. So, um, you know, I don't, I don't really think a player would be checking with trips here, but regardless, we have a straight, let's go for some value and let's go for max value. He has about $150 behind. So we're just going to rip it all in. We go ahead and make the jam 150 ish dollars effective. And he tanks for a long, long time and ends up making the call after thinking it over. We show we're good. Um, he doesn't show and ends up mucking his cards, but later on during the day caught up with him. And he said that he had eight, nine there for uh, turned two pair. So I guess it's a little bit of a loose call on the river there. Probably could have uh, raised it up on the turn, but happy to get paid. Quick interruption to give another shout out to a few people who have capped huge in the following poker tournaments on my Poker Bros account. If you are interested in joining and you want to be featured in one of these videos, definitely uh, hit me up and go ahead and join in on the action. So first off, Dan, who turned a $40 buy-in into $3,000, placing fifth. First place was $14,000, which was absolutely crazy. So that was a deep run. Shout out to you, Dan. That was freaking awesome. Secondly, Chase, who turned a $25 tournament uh, $25 buy-in into 2000 placing in third freaking amazing um, that was also just crazy we have huge guarantees so if you want to play and get in on the action like I said email is on the screen shoot me one and get connected and uh, I'll hook it all up following hand we have five six of clubs in the hijack we have an on the gun player who limps very recreational player on the gun plus one who is a reg raises to $15 a middle position player makes the call here, thinking about three betting this in position, but opted to uh, just make the call lower variance route. And uh, the button on the gun player call as well. So we're we're going to a flop multi way. At least we are kind of in position. So we're going to go to a flop multi way. Flop comes jack five eight rainbow bottom pair backdoor flush draw backdoor straight draws. I guess yeah whatever. Um, it checks to a middle position player, kind of a recreational player, who throws out a bet of $25. Here with 75 in the middle, um, just thought that I was pricing the call with middle pair or bottom pair here with the back door draws. Um, I don't know. We can hopefully get lucky, see what happens. So I go ahead and call the $25 priced in, and the button also makes the call. 
So we're off to a turn three ways. The turn comes the eight of clubs, which is actually the perfect card for us. Uh, amazing card for us to bluff on as we can rep a bunch of middle pairs and obviously with a backdoor flush shot to go along with it. So if right now effective stack sizes, Button has around $300 and the middle position player has under $200 in their stacks and I cover both of them. So um, when middle position player checks to me, going to bet on the larger-ish side, um, setting up for a river jam here, just repping the eight, I go ahead and bet $100. The button tanks for a while and ends up making the call. Obviously, don't really want the call, just want to take it down right now. Um, and he calls without 170 ish dollars behind. The middle position player folds. So, here, button calling, like I said, going to stick with my plan to jam on any river card. The river comes the five of diamonds. So, we improve to a boat. Um, we have bottom boat with a five. This was one of the cards that I did not plan on coming, but the run good is here. I don't think we can jam anymore, um, and it really just throws a wrench into our plans. I go ahead and go for value, try to figure out what in the world he has, because I don't think he has an 8 when he tank called there. So let's go to bet for value, and we go with a sizing of $125. Pretty small bet, and um, he doesn't think we're too long before jamming his whole stack in. So I have to call it off, right? It's only $50 more. I have to call this off even though he uh, jammed and it's almost like I think I'm beat here a lot. But I call and he shows pocket nines? He showed pocket nine? He jammed with nines? I don't understand. Maybe we're, maybe we're lucky that we actually hit the river because I guess he probably would have called a jam with nines, which would have been absolutely disgusting. But we're lucky to get more value with that and hitting our uh, hitting our five there to boat up. So we get some value and chip up. Hand after that, pocket aces in the cutoff. We love aces here. Middle division player limps. I raise things up to $15 and he makes the call with a pretty short stack. So pretty straightforward pre-flop action there. We're going to a flop in position against the short stack. The flop is as good as it can get. It's ace, jack. 10 rainbow so flopping top set here when he checks to me going to bet $15 pretty small bet just trying to price him in with whatever random draws he could have with other random gutter balls with a hand like king nine or something like that um, we're off to a turn when he makes the call the turn comes the eight of hearts bringing a backdoor flush draw he checks and uh, when I go and reach for chips to bet with top set um, it looks like he wants the call so here just going to size up a little bit bigger here I go ahead and bet $40. Um, I wanted to just kind of commit his whole stack in there without actually putting them all in. I'm at $40. He jams $93 total, and it is obviously a snap call for us. So we're off to a river. The river comes a six. We feel good with top set. He shows queen nine off suit for a turned straight. Uh, flopped open-ended, turned it, and got there. So... We lose that one, unfortunately, with top sets, and um, we lose to a short stack, at least. The last thing we'll go over, we have four or five of diamonds on the button. A competent reg opens it up to $12 in middle position. Here, it folds all the way back to me. I haven't 3-bet at all this session, and given that he opened the action up pretty small on the smaller sizing, um, let's just try to see what happens. Let's target him right now in position. We go ahead and 3-bet $40, mix things up, and he makes the call. We're off to a flop, and the flop is, once again, as good as I can ask for. It's 633 rainbow. Oh my goodness. Wow. Flopping in the open-ended straight flush draw. Yeah, we're going with this flop, um, and we're pretty disguised given that we 3-bet. So when he checks to me, I'm going to bet $60 here. Um, just committing his random pairs that he might have, like um, pocket pairs. And uh, once again, he makes the call. So we're off to a turn and let's hope to improve. The turn comes the deuce of clubs, adding a backdoor flush draw. And once again, he checks, hitting our straight here. And it's pretty disguised. You really can't put me on a straight um, with four or five after three betting preflop. I'm going to turn my hand and kind of polarize myself here on the turn, hoping to look like a bluff. He has a little under $300 behind in the stack. And obviously, we're trying to get stacks in at this point. So I go ahead and bet 220. Um, if he's on a draw, he might have to commit himself and jam, which is exactly what I want to happen. Here, just over betting the pot. 
$220, he folds uh, pretty quickly face up. He shows that he had pocket sevens. So would have been cool if he had the seven of diamonds came when he rivered, you know, top boat and I would have rivered a straight flush. Regardless, the action stops there and that's how that hand played out. Outro time, uh, we didn't play for too long and there's just a lot of music going on. All right, well, we didn't play for too long. I played for three and a half hours and we managed to squeak out a win after the beginning was just so bad. Um, this is the crazy thing about why I should just still stick to 1-3 is because in the first 30 minutes I was so freaking tilted. It was absolutely insane how mad I was. Just like irrationally mad about how bad I was running for 30 minutes because I was down five, almost $600 in the first 30 minutes. So whatever. Um, but managed to squeak out a win, which is nice. I'll go over the numbers when I'm in the car. But today wasn't too bad. Um, played for three and a half hours and I was in the game for $800 and out of the game for, um, out of the game for not that much more, but <clears throat> enough more to make it worthwhile kind of for the short amount of time I played. So yeah, that's, that was how today went. Put in my car. I was out of the game for 988. So profit of $188. Can't complain about it. Um, yeah, that's all I can say. Not too bad, played for three and a half hours, made $188, so never going to complain about that. Um, to track my progress moving forward for the next upcoming next year, 2020, let me know in the comments below what how you think I should track my progress. The 10K bankroll challenge, as you'll see um, later on that when I completed it, it was never really like a legitimate challenge. It was kind of a challenge for me to save money and just keep that on the record. Um, but in terms of like if I ever thought I wasn't ever going to make it, I knew I was going to make it. Um, if you, I'm going to go over the year of 2019 and, you know, my poker income and go over all the graphs and go over how I did throughout the course of the year from January to December. Um, that's going to be a cool one, cool video to make. So you'll see that, you know, I was never really concerned about getting to 10K. It was just when I was going to get to 10K. So let me know in the comments below how you think uh, I should track my progress moving forward. Um, maybe do some sort of different challenge. I'd love to hear you guys come up with some ideas. But besides that, I'm signing off in this video for now. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Check me out on Instagram. I post there almost daily or basically daily, Rampage Poker. Um, hit me up on my Facebook group. Always fun to talk hands with you guys. And uh, that's about it. Second channel, I always post there. Every other day I'm not posting there. So Tuesdays and Thursdays, I post on my second channel. So that's it. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Peace.